Welcome back to the shipyard. It is blind booster number 10. And with that, we have Ferengi. Now before I actually get there, I want to take a moment and tell you guys thank you. I greatly appreciate all that you have done. Sharing the videos, liking, commenting, generating buzz about these. Again, reminder, these things are coming out. Hopefully late October, play for November events, and then they're out for about a year. So get into your stores, get into those OPs, run them, play them, have fun with these things. I do want to say in the description, there's going to be a link with a survey about these blind boosters. If you can take a moment of your time to fill that out, I would greatly appreciate it. It is going to help with a project that I'm going to do, and I'll talk about that at the end of the video. But if you want to take a look at that, and you have a few moments, appreciate that. So, without further ado, the Ferengi Blind Booster. It is Nunx Marauder. And you're going, oh, it's a Marauder. Yeah, I know. But, it's actually a pretty cool ship here. 3143, just like all the other Marauders, double weapon. During the activation phase, you may perform a scan action as a free action. If you do so, place an auxiliary power token beside your ship. This isn't bad. You can scan and evade. You can scan and target lock. It's a reasonable combination. The Ferengi have a decent maneuver dial. You've got a few good options for green moves. So you've got some wiggle room there. And anything that helps you make your attack hit harder is going to be a good thing. This is an ability that ties in with the weapon, which you'll see why that is later, but it really does work well. This gets very useful in constructed play when you can take Ferengi missile launchers, and I think that this is perhaps the best named Decora because it's a passive ability. Now you can argue with me there, and I'm perfectly happy to have a reasonable discussion there. But as a blind booster ship, it's going to be okay. Our captain is, of course, Nunk. After you move, if an opposing ship within range 1 to 3 of your ship has a scan token, perform a free battle station. Now, again, not going to happen every single turn. But when he triggers, you're getting a battle station for nothing. For just existing. And you're going to make your attack hit harder. Now you can have scan, battle station, target lock. If that doesn't let your attack hit hard, I don't know what to tell you. That is the kind of stuff that starts to get through cloak. It gets through species 8472. It can put a dent in just about whatever you want. Not everybody scans, but there's ways to make people scan or encourage people to scan. Is he an awesome captain? No, because you can't force your opponent to scan. But if they have a scan token, then Nunk is someone that's going to see some play. Skill 6 is late enough that most people have moved and taken their action. So Nunk is a decent captain. I'm happy to see him for the Ferengi faction. I'm glad that they've got some interesting captains here. In keeping with the theme of this Marauder, our elite talent is Kidnap. Action. Disable all of your remaining shields. Target a ship within range 1 to 2 that's not cloaked, has no active shields. Discard this card to steal a crew. If the stolen upgrade exceeds your ship's restrictions, discard that upgrade instead of stealing it. That's a little annoying from a standpoint of then they can save it. But, you know, if you've already discarded your crew and you've got that open slot, then no big deal, right? This is a card, yeah, it's situational. But I like that it's a talent. I like that I like that it's one use because that's all you really need. I don't love that it's five points. I think that it's too expensive for anything outside of this blind booster. But in a blind booster, this is a card that I'm happy to see. Ganking is something we don't see enough of. And so getting it in a blind booster and saying, hey, I've got it. Maybe it comes into play. It probably doesn't, but if it does, I can take advantage of it. Then, okay, we make it work. So, I don't know how much this sees play in Constructed, but 
from a blind booster perspective, I'm going to take it, I'm going to run with it, and hope for the best. Our tech is Geodesic Pulse. For an action, you can immediately perform an additional maneuver with speed 2 or less. You do not lose your ability to perform actions if your ship base overlaps another ship's base with this maneuver. However, you cannot attack this round. So this is one of those cards. I'm of two minds with it. I like that it is a repeatable action and it's not a disable or a discard. However, this thing has absolutely no thematic tie-in with what happened in the show. It is a movement card, and we're talking about a tech that messed with a sun. I don't see the correlation. This goes on my pile of, I want to see what they do with this. I think that there's some synergy, that there's some cards that can make this interesting. We've got the Ferengi Tactical Officer that does something similar to this. So Ferengi are getting some extra movement, and that's great for positioning. I just wish that they didn't lose their attack, because they only have that 90 degree arc. They cannot afford to give up an attack. This card's probably overpriced, probably the card I cut from this pack in terms of not fitting on my blind booster, but it's still going to be useful in mission setup. You know, if you're in an objective where you have to get very specific movements, this is a card that I'm going, hey, I need to make a one bank and get there. Okay, cool. I'm there. From a joust fighting perspective, terrible card. From a movement scenario where I got to be in a certain spot, I love this card. So this is one situational. We'll see what happens with it. Our crew is Omog. Between any of the phases, you may discard this card to remove a disable upgrade token from one of your weapon upgrades. Cool ability, right? Discard, get a weapon back. A five point discard for that, bit pricey. That's okay. Or, this is where it gets good, people. When attacking, during the declare target step, you may discard this card to target a ship at range 1 to 3. Choose one non-Borg weapon upgrade on that ship with a printed cost of 4 or less. Keyword there is printed. And disable it to perform its attack as if it were deployed to your ship. Now, as far as I can tell, there is absolutely nothing that stops you from targeting a friendly ship with this card and using one of their weapons as if it was on your ship and then firing it. Yeah, then you're disabling your own stuff, and that's a little bit of a bummer, but maybe you're just in a position where you need to disable your own stuff. That second ability is super duper useful. Now, I love it a lot more if I can use it to target my enemy fleet. But I can't control what they bring. And there's not a ton of weapons that cost four or less printed. You know, we're talking about like Ferengi missile launchers, some photon torpedoes, some plasma torpedoes, but those aren't the ones that people really run. And then like some dorsal phaser arrays. It's kind of a mixed bag. And there's no guarantee that you've really got good quality. It all depends, right? Omog's situational, I like him because he's got options here. He is one of two things. And as you're going to see on this weapon, re-enabling it for five extra points, probably worthwhile. All right, now, this was the only ship that WizKids requested that I do in a specific position. And this is the card that I think is the reason why. Weapon Ports. Four attack dice, range one to three. Attack, disable. While this card is disabled, you roll one less defense die. If you hit an attack squadron with this attack during the deal damage step, discard one attack squadron token for each uncancelled hit or crit max of three. Hello! Fighters can lose multiple tokens. Thank you! It's about time for all the games that fighters have been a pain in our butts. This card fixes the problem and I could not be more excited and I know that I'm sounding a little bit angry but it is the venting of frustration and relief and this card revolutionizes the game far more than upgraded phasers ever did and 
I love upgraded phasers. I think a bonus attack does a lot. But this, this card that says, yeah, Federation fighters that have a hole and a shield, I'm going to attack you. I'm going to roll, I don't know, hit, hit, crit. Uh, You lose token, token, token. Done. Fighters are now situational. Once this card starts dispersing, this game changes. Absolutely changes. Ferengi have the coolest weapons in the game. Ferengi missile launchers, weapon ports. And that is awesome. So, overall, as a blind booster, this thing is quite interesting. The ship is painted gold, which I love. I think it's the perfect compliment for a Ferengi fleet and shows that little extra pizzazz. I know there's that line about gold, nothing but worthless gold. And and it just makes me laugh. It's there, right? It it's very Ferengi, it's very gaudy, it's very showy and uh it's a great contrast. But Nunks Marauder, it's a situational booster. Right? The ship is Cool, right? An extra action for an auxiliary power. We're kind of getting built-in stuff like that. And and I like that. I, I think it's a solid course of action. Nunk is a good captain. Situational again, but I like having a chance at it. The other cards here are all situational. Things are going to come in. If fighters aren't a huge thing... If you're not up against them, weapon ports aren't going to really be the difference maker in the blind. But this is a pack that has a card that changes constructed play. And for that reason alone, you gotta get it. And you maybe gotta get more than one of it. So yeah, it's what's out there. Alright, so at the start of the video, I told you I was talking about future projects. So now that I've released all ten blinds, Here's what's next for the shipyard. My girlfriend Natasha and I are going to do a tournament of the blinds. Part of what I need you guys to do with the survey is to go through and rank the blinds. We are going to use that data to seed the blinds, create a tournament. From there, we're going to play nine matches, and those matches will be elimination matches. Winner moves on, loser goes home. From there, we will crown a winner of the blinds. And yeah, maybe it's who you think it'll be. Maybe it's not. Who knows? The whole point there, we're going to film those games and we're going to put them on the channel. And I think that that will bring some really interesting gameplay footage. One thing Star Trek Attack Wing doesn't have is enough gameplay footage, so I'm trying to change that. So, if that's something that you'd like to see, and you're willing to help out, fill out the survey. Even if it's something you don't care about, but you're still willing to let your voice be known, fill out that survey. I would certainly appreciate it. It's completely anonymous. I don't know anything. Just get the data. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. You guys have been awesome. And I want to take a moment to thank WizKids for this opportunity. They have demonstrated a lot of support for this game with these boosters. They showed that they care. They showed that they want this game to improve. That they want it to continue to succeed and thrive and be something that is representative of the amazingness that is Star Trek. All that being said, thank you guys for watching, and until next time, we'll see you around the shipyard. Take care.